Hello, and welcome to the Two Big Game Club. I'm your host, Liam Gallagher. This is episode two of our Let's Play of Harvest Moon, uh, Friends of Middle Town. I'm joined by... Allie! Allie! Hi! Welcome back to the program, Allie. Thank you! All right, let's do a really brief recap. What have we done so far in Harvest Moon? Uh, so far in Harvest Moon, we have cleared a little bit of space in our uh, fields. We chopped some wood, we pulled some weeds, we uh, smashed some rocks, and we tilled the land, and then we planted turnips and watered them. Uh, turnips that we bought in town. Oh, that are now sprouting! Look yeah. at them go! This, and see, this is the excitement of playing Harvest <laughs> Moon. It was genuine, it happened! <laughs> no, absolutely. So it's kind of one of the magical things about Harvest Moon is like, uh, even though you know it's a game and it's predictable and it's being operated by a computer, it still feels kind of cool to have planted the turnips and to see them grow and then go one morning and discover that they've sprouted. Yeah. And you're like, my little babies! <laughs> Look at them! Yeah. Did you get the mill in there? You can't. Oh, right. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll upgrade our watering skills yeah. later, but that's, this is part of being a, a young Steve Zahn. An upstart farmer. <laughs> yeah. A sea walking farm. Yeah. With our dog, Domville. Good old Domville. Oh, so happy. Um, is you don't have um, you don't have all the elite wares. You yeah. don't have all those blues and purples and greens. Yeah. We're just we got common vendor trash to work with. So what else did we do? We harvested our honey. Um, we gave offerings to the harvest goddess. Yeah. Future future wife. Future wife, harvest harvest goddess. We um, gave some colored grass to one of the uh, harvest sprites gnomes guy guys uh who will hopefully help us in our endeavors later down the line and our evil plots yeah we uh talked to a couple townsfolk yeah got to learn that some of the ladies like to gossip yeah and uh that everyone's really happy that we're new in town but that we're here we're doing it Oh, well, we also learned that we're not very good at things yet. Yeah. <laughs> our, our character seems to be either like pretty pudgy and winded, gets winded easily, or as thin as a rake with no stamina. Yeah. I feel like it's it's the second of the two. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a young Japanese boy with, uh, with no PE training. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he grew up in the city. Yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting because like growing up I didn't think about these games as being... Uh, Japanese in character at all mm. but now that I'm older I definitely see how much these games present like an idealized view of like the rural Japanese existence right yeah not in a really like you know gung-ho like nationalist way <laughs> but it's definitely reflects upon you know being in the country as something that's wholesome and right and as a simple con contemplative you know, satisfaction to it. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely how I feel when playing these games. Yeah. So, if that's what they're going for, they hit it spot on. They definitely delivered on it. Yeah. Ah, come on. What button is it? There you go. <laughs> I think that the Harvest Goddess might like these. I don't know. Let's go throw one in the water. Let's see what she says. She's just... Somebody must get paid to come by with, like, a pool skimmer. <laughs> yeah, just... Pulling out all the crap she doesn't want. Yeah, there's all the rotting food and flowers that have just been hucked in the water. <laughs> Which way are you going? Where are you going? Oh, right. She's back that way. Yeah, yeah. The other, I think up the other way is towards the, the mountain. Right. There's usually a mountain, like a vista in these games. You can look over on for certain festival days. Well, if it isn't Steve Zahn. Hmm, come again. No. Still no. She really liked that She one. did like that one a lot. Alright, let's see how she feels about this bamboo. Mm, no. Also, oh, no. She, well, she didn't like it or dislike it. You still gotta stop scrolling through those things so fast. I read it. 
How did you read all of that in that time? I just You're a speed reader. I just get used to the Harvest Moon text. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Certainly, it's more than I can say. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, you gotta court the Harvest Goddess the same way you court a regular woman, which is just which like, is throwing things at her, <laughs> throwing things into her house. You like this? You like this? How ah. about this? You like it? Throwing, I got you a flower. Throwing trash on. I got you lawn. bamboo. I got you anything that was just kind of lying around. Yeah, I, I just grabbed all the junk in the in the vicinity. I got you a log I found. And just threw it into your house. <laughs> I guess like being magical, she probably doesn't actually live in the water. But. Yeah, she just like manifests because you come to offer yeah. something to her. She probably lives on a plane of existence that's not exactly intelligible to us. That seems right. So uh, maybe you'll find out when you get to marry her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or maybe it will forever remain a mystery. Yeah, now you'll know what hell is really like. Whoa. Um, <laughs> that took a turn. <laughs> well, it's just like you know, she's in some like otherworldly plane mm. where like your horrible, your your poor corporeal corporeal form can't properly manifest. Right, right, right. So yeah. to you, it's kind of like some sort of. An intelligible hellscape. Yeah, yeah. Your mind is just free to float and decay. Yeah. Um. You know, as as usually these things go in those kinds of like folk myths, right? Right. You know, there it's like I don't know, like prankster goddess who who lures you into the pond. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Could be. Did we pick Dumble up the dog, the dog today? Yeah, you did. Dumble the dog really liked it. Yeah. Well, we got a little bit of time left, so we're gonna go say hi to some folks. Sure. It's a good time of the day to go chat. Yeah. Some... Oh. oh, oh, Rick, come back. Rick, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> All of our eggs lay delicious chickens. Oh, close. Whoa. <laughs> Water meal. Yeah, one of the things that's interesting about this game is uh, you start off with a lot of infrastructure. We haven't looked at a lot of it. We'll take a tour of the farm tomorrow. Um, but uh, uh, in other Harvest Moon games, you basically just start with like a house. And it's like, get to it. Uh, you over here. You know, multiply. Let's do it. This is the lumberjack's house. Huh. Um, but in this, you start off with like uh, a beehive and a... Uh, and a water mill and all right. that stuff. Usually you have to buy them. But I'm sure they'll nickel and dime us in the end. Oh, most certainly. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think of the game's visual presentation? I think it's very beautiful, actually. Um, I really like the aesthetic, and I think that the menus are simple. Um, but, you know, they fit very nicely into the rest of, like, the way that the game looks. I don't know too much about how they, how it is to navigate them. Especially with the, you know, playing an old game with a, you know, new style controller situation. Yeah. But, um, I mean, there's some of it that's a little kind of tough to get a grasp on. Uh, but I don't think we've really hit many of those menus yet, where there's, like almost like affinity kind of measures uh, between characters or... Yeah, lots of bars. Yeah, lots of bars or hearts or or various things. Yeah, there we go. Uh, with our little harvest. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of those. But I think they become fairly quickly, easily to understood. I think we're just not quite at a place where they're... Yeah. They are yet. You're just talking about just thinking about them immediately. I think that a lot of them are pretty ugly. Uh, it's got sort of like a nice like uh, patterned farm almanac kind of like handicraft. Yeah, I kind of like it. Stationary thing, but uh, I think that the, a lot of the like the a lot of the way the menus or in the information in the menus are presented, I think is pretty like Spartan, which to a certain extent makes sense because it's just like giving you access to the information that you want at hand. Um, 
it's, it's you know, and, and as, once you know your way around them and you know where all the information is being kept, it's not so bad because you just go where you need to access to it, access it. But, you know, and to a certain extent, I think it's inevitable uh, because, like, farm life is going to dictate that you're going to need to keep ledgers in order to keep track of your crops and whatnot. But, I feel like that's part of the charm. Right. Is that, you know, you don't necessarily get a good handle on all of the charts and ledgers and things until they're relevant. Um, and that they do seem kind of very straightforward and farmer almanac -y. I think it fits really nicely with it, with everything else in the game. Yeah, yeah I can almost imagine like granddad uh, at the at the table with the dimming light of the setting sun and a candle trying to read the bank statement yeah. uh, with his glasses that he has to go get mother to find. <laughs> yeah. it's, it hasn't been since last month that he had to read anything. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's something charming about it. Yeah, I, I think it, like, depends on what you're going for. Because I, I think that, uh, you know, obviously there's ups and downs there. There's elements of, like, simulation that are handy to uh, reproduce because of their obtuseness that creates flavor. And then there's things like uh, user experience that are somewhat obfuscated by clunky menu systems. Right, and, and, and that's something I think that you would have to tell me, right? Like, yeah. yeah, you know, in navigating these things, is it is it a clunky user experience? Or does it feel like you kind of naturally progress through understanding the menus as you, as you go forward in the game? My sense is that they're not really piled in there in any tangible or meaningful way. Right. They're just like, we needed to list a hundred different types of statistics. Right, here we, they are. <laughs> yeah, we've ordered the pages together in ways that, uh, you know, group the information sensibly. This guy, this guy looks like he's got some things on his mind. Yeah, he's he's the jaded one. Yeah. Where Cliff is the is the reserved one. This guy is the. Yeah. Welcome to the boonies. My name's Chip on the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Walking battle. Yeah, we're doing the running man. You steal the mail. Check in. Check in. Oh, we, we said we'd do the, the tour today. Oh, oh yeah. Well. I'm gonna buy some more seeds. Oh. Oh, people. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. That's something you can fall in love with. Yeah, you can tell because he's got a heart right there. Yeah. Nice. Good work. What just happened there. Can you see that? What? Oh. An old man. The old guy. Uh, the blacksmith went into the blacksmith shop. Um, I think it, I sort of miss saw it. It's possible. Between some gorgeous area. Oh my eye. Here we are. There, a uh, Janine's shop. Oh, Jeff. So downtrodden. He works hard for his money. He's kind of frightening looking. A little bit. I think these are, there's a bunch of posters that like I just <laughs> add. cannot read. <laughs> Oh, no thanks. You can wrap stuff to give it. Oh, to, to your potential sweethearts? Yeah, yeah. Or to the elves. Right. Oh, yeah. I suppose you could. Yeah. Same so potatoes this time, huh? Yeah. So they're worth more. Um, but, uh take overall less time to mend, tend, right? Because mm. there's less crops per dollar. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. Right, so they have a higher, like, uh, what's the word, like, uh, investment concentration. Okay. Right, so you get more gold back per, like, energy spent. Yeah, that makes sense. It, like, higher energy density. <laughs> Hi, Basil. Yeah. Yeah, he loves books. So he's the, uh... No. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> he's the naturalist character. Right. He goes out into the world and... Cutscene. Mary is the, uh, bookish love interest. I think she's pretty cute. She's a librarian. Ah. 
Maybe I just have a spot, soft spot in my heart for librarians. Yeah, possibly. Uh. Oh. Wow, she's writing a novel. She's very deep. She's deep. Yeah, she's thoughtful. Yeah, so this is sort of like tutorial village. Yeah. Right, where you can read what yeah. controls are, which we're not going to. Um, but I do you. think it's kind of weird that when you close the book, you get that dog whining sound. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think a dog's been kicked. <laughs> yeah. Or caught in the book that you just closed. <laughs> yeah, which I read the case. Uh, so the way that it works out is that you can end up with any one of the girls, and uh, but they each have like a suitor that they're like matched with at the beginning of the game who that if you don't pursue them they end up uh getting hitched to that's interesting do all of them have that is there one that doesn't only the harvest goddess right yeah yeah uh, yeah i don't think anybody checks up with the harvest goddess unless you do <laughs> good to know so l and up okay we'll find whatever these girls don't have to make sense I just need one set, right? You just need to be able to use them. No. Um, so we're gonna plan our potatoes. Potats. Yeah. yeah. I think the game is good looking. I think that uh, the the quintessential charm of the game is here. I think everything is clear and colorful. Uh, I mean, like at this point, we're basically dealing with a system that has the horsepower of, say, like a Super Nintendo. So, you know, this is not necessarily a very, like, technically ambitious game, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about something that's 2D and in color, with, like, one sprite on screen right now. Yeah, I feel like that's enough, though. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I guess there's probably different sprites for all of the different plant objects and whatnot. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, the tech barrier isn't that high. Uh, but there's certainly something for... Uh, delivering on a concept that you're capable of delivering on. Yeah. Um, rather than getting all tech crazy and putting particle effects everywhere. <laughs> uh, oh. oh! Oh! What are you? It's a groundhog. What do you do with a groundhog? Apparently you can smash them on the head with a hammer. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, you, and there's, there's like a stat that keeps track of how many groundhogs you've mashed, though. But it's like a positive thing. As, as a number. Oh, just as a thing. Yeah. You might just be a groundhog murderer. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's like... There's no judgment attached. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything like... Oh, fuck! Oh, no! <laughs> Somebody uh, lost potatoes! This is, this is the thing about... This is the heartbreak. You just experienced it. Yeah. How do I cycle my tools, then? Makes me angry. Oh well, we will we will suffer this loss. Yeah, we'll recover somehow. It's like 150 bucks. Yeah, but this is what happens, you know. Sometimes when you're a farmer, you just spill a you bag just of seeds. Spill an entire bag of seeds in your house. And you can't pick them up. No, because they're really, they're really, really small. small. I don't know. They're very small. Yeah, you can't find those. No. Um. But yeah, I mean. Okay, thanks, Zach. Um, they'll be worse things, right? Because they're seeds that are way more expensive. Yeah. And you'll, like, accidentally just dump them on the floor. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, I saved for months. <laughs> so we said we did the tour, and we will do the tour. We've already done the honey thing, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we've got our honey thing. We've got this water mill to mill corn into chicken feed. <laughs> For when we get all of those chickens. Yeah, and this is our chicken co-op. <laughs> our chicken co-op? Yeah. yeah. All of the chickens have an equal share here. Yeah, we have zero bushels of chicken. Uh, we got our own shipping crate for the chicken hut or the coop co-op. So if I press it, I can't believe I wasted the I have to get over it. We'll never do it again. Mm. <laughs> I definitely will. Yeah. I guess when it comes to seeds, it might just be worth it to go through the menus, even though it's long. Yeah, maybe. 
probably end up saving time by not throwing it away. And what is this building? Oh, so this is where the cows um, and the uh, uh, sheep and horses live, I think. Or just cows and sheep. Because your horse, I believe, lives here when you get him. Right. You get gifted him eventually. It seems like a nice place for a horse to be. Lots of hay. It's very yellow. I hear that horses like hay. They do say that hay is for horses. Yeah. Okay, let's head into town and see if we can uh, we can meet anybody. So, what are your ambitions for this playthrough of? Uh... Um, I would like to get a horse. Okay, I think um, you have to. Great, number one, horse. I would like to get some cows and some sheep and some chicken. Okay. I would like to take part in some of the festivals Okay. that happen. So this is all just like straight this down the barrel. This is just like gameplay. I know. Um, I would like to uh, get to know some of the hilarious storylines of the townsfolk. And, and his potential love interest. Yeah. From what I understand, some of them are pretty funny. The way that the characters interact with each other. Yeah, they're silly. You get to see a bunch of hilarious cutscenes, and that would be fun. Yeah. I, I think I'd like to involve the gnome spirits? Harvest yeah. Harvest guys? I think the harvest spirits is the name of them. Harvest spirits. I'd like to involve the harvest spirits in the running of our farm. I think that could go a long way. Yeah, I like automation. I like not having to do it myself. Yeah. Yeah, ooh. Uh, if we could adopt a kitty, that would be nice. No, you can't do that. Oh, that's a shame. Cats are for the wretched. Oh, wow. Great. What do you have going on? Uh, I don't know. What do you? What missions do you have for this playthrough? Um, betrothed to the heart of goddess. Right. Because okay. I think that's Number hilarious. One. <laughs> I think that's funny. You can marry a god. Did you uh, give her your uh, offering today? No, I didn't. No. That's fine. Or no rush. We're here for years. <laughs> We're in it for the long haul. Yeah. Literal, actual years. Yeah. So that's number one. Yeah. Um, get fabulously wealthy. Oh, wow. Mad stacks. Okay. Yeah. Have wealth beyond uh, any necessity. Sure. Just to see what what we can amass. Uh huh. Get a fortune. Um, like, uh, set a ludicrous high for um, earnings in a single day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those are some lofty goals. Yeah, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta aim big. I mean, you know, I'm also comfortable with aiming small. No. Yeah. Not on sea walking farm. No. No. We're gonna industrialize. Go get out. We're gonna industrialize farming here. Interesting. Oh no. We're blue. So tired. Yeah, so if you stay out too late and work too hard too often and don't eat enough, your character can actually get ill. Yeah. Well, we've been eating our, uh, our. Vegetables. <laughs> we have a bread roll every morning. Yeah. I think we're doing pretty good. Okay. Here we are again. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. So today is most like every other day. Yeah. It's about having. Let's get those errands done. It's about, it's about having uh, ambitions. Pet that dog. Water those turnips. Yeah. It's about setting simple goals and you know just being satisfied with your achievements. Mm -hmm. I think we got some turnips today. Oh, look at that. Very exciting. Very exciting. Those oh. are worth money. And how much is a turnip worth? I don't know. Mm. Forget. The, it tells you when you, uh, like, in their almanac. Right. Uh, so B puts it into my bag, because I want to give one to the Harvest Goddess. See if she likes as it. A, as a tithe. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like turnips, yes or no? It's a blood oath. Ooh. Dark. To, to the Harvest God. You have to sacrifice a ram to it. <laughs> Dead ram in the pool. Ew, gross. <laughs> Just floating around. It's unpleasant. Yeah, well, you know. Paganism, right? It's mm. Brutal faith. Yeah. 
Uh, pagans do not write in. <laughs> Your religion is lovely and well respected by us. Mm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just go with it. Um, but yeah. I'm thinking like Harvest Goddess, you know. Crops are probably like her MO. Yeah, it could be. So I think one thing we gotta Maybe she just doesn't like turnips. We'll find out. Yeah. One thing we gotta do is start saving for uh, better gear. Yeah. So that we don't have to suffer through this watering. Yeah. Also we gotta start making friends with those harvest spirits. Yeah. Get them to do the hard work for you. Get the, get the watering done, at least. You don't have to pay them anything. You pay them in colored brass for what I understand. Yeah. They're also magic. Yeah. So they can water places that you cannot reach. Yes, yeah, so which is very useful. Yeah. Um, one of my ambitions is to win one of the horse races. That is a good ambition. Yeah, I think the ladies like it when you win the horse races. Yeah, sure. I'm not sure if the harvest goddess cares. Well, we'll find out. I think maybe it's like Anne or I forget what her name. One of the one of the girls, all all each of them like different things. Mm -hmm. uh, oh sure, so some of them were like, "Wow, you won that horse race! It's amazing." Yeah. Some were like, "You were the best cook." Yeah. I that, like that. That kind of thing, right? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, you can fit an entire pool ball, <laughs> three pool balls in your mouth. I really dig that, yeah. Yeah, man. Okay, come on, fingers crossed. Hey. Hate goddess. Mm, no. no. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. She like she likes the crops. Yeah, I grew it. I grew it myself. Harvest goddess. Lady likes the crops. Yeah. I uh, I made it myself for you. Mm -hmm. And we'll get some blue grass to uh, give to the blue gnome. Go visit them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So eventually there's going to be like harvest festivals and stuff. I think the first one's on the 18th, which is a horse race, yes. if I recall correctly. Yeah. But, uh, That's right. Gotta make sure to set our calendar and pay attention to the clock. As many times I have forgotten to make it to the town square on time in order to go to mm. one thing. That'll happen. Yeah. I don't want to miss the festival. No, especially because they happen so infrequently in the game that, like, they're one of the few things that actually, like, punctuate the routine of gameplay. Hey, priest. Um, so it's nice to break it up with anything. Right. But, um... Spade. Yes, this is wonderful. But, um... I like their little, I don't know, I guess you can't really call it a saying, like, tick? Yeah, yeah. But, um... Their brand of insanity. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what makes a gnome tick. I don't know. Colored grass. Yeah. Carter, the, the coach for religion. <laughs> He's a religion coach. Religion coach, yeah. What's up, May? Someone likes treats. I know it's, mm. it's children. Yep. What money do we have? Memo? Where do I check? No idea. Earnings? Sounds unlikely. That sounds likely. So we don't have no money. But I forget how much things actually cost. So this is the hospital. We can go to the hospital. We're here. Cutscene. Look at these graphics. Mm. I don't know what the trick is. Mm, I'm not sure either. Why do you get gray hair? Ellie is, uh, I guess, the nurse, and you can uh, wed her, her girlfriend or whatever. Um, but look at that collar. That is fashion. She's almost like a Dragon Ball Z character. A like little. Vegeta. Uh. In power armor. Or whatever it's called. Yeah. Word is spreading fast. Yeah, well, there's probably not a lot that happens in this town. True.
<laughs> and we discovered that the prank was showing her a bug. That's always a prank. <laughs> You're a boy like me. Yeah, not really. Oof. Yeah, you're gonna boss him. Yikes. You're on your own, Steve. Stu, or whatever your name Sad is. Sad kid. So it seems like, uh, given the in-game clock, that probably two days is uh, going to be a good rhythm to hit for these Let's Plays. Alright, that's good to know. No. Yeah, those kids. I'm a doctor. I'm running around in my hospital. <laughs> Don't worry. I, I wasn't going to sanitize things anyways. No, no big deal. Let's see how much the things cost. So... Time doesn't pass when you're inside. Welcome. I think it's Jane? Jane? Karen. Karen. Yeah. That was close. What a heartthrob. Yeah. Literal heartthrob. Literally. <laughs> Grey heart, though. Yeah. Steve Zahn is my whole name. Hey. What can I do you for? So, I think the basket increases the amount of stuff you can hold in your inventory. Okay. But it costs five grand. That is expensive. Yeah, the rucksack increases the number of tools you can hold, but it's three grand. Also, very expensive. Dumpling powder. So, this is MSG, right? <laughs> sure. Uh, chocolate, I think. Um, Oil. Um, yeah. Uh, toaster? No. Wasa bread? Flour. Okay. <laughs> the idea of flour being 50 gold each. Yikes. This is a volume of flour. Curry, curry powder. Curry sure. from the curry bush. Yeah. This is for your, your sweet cooking. Mm -hmm. Uh, donuts from Pokemon. Rice. <laughs> I like that they just call them rice balls here. I yeah, because they are. Right. Oh. Well, this is all food you can eat. Some things like different things and you can give them to them. Right. I think we gotta push ahead. Yeah, go cucumber. We get uh, a group of cucumbers. We can place some of our turnips. Sure. So Zach will uh, come at five o'clock to pay us off for our sweet turnips. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Until then, this is how much money we've got. Excuse me. It's a slow start. We'll get there. Yeah. Yeah, the game kind of curves upward in that, where like. You you get stronger, and your tools improve, so you're able to accomplish way more within a day. Um, but uh, um, and I guess you also get help. So at a certain point, uh, from the gnomes or whatever they're called. Um, so at a certain point, the like the pace of what you're accomplishing definitely picks up. But uh, they keep things nice and tangible and nice and manageable right at the very beginning. So I think I'm just a little sticky with my L button. Mm -hmm. Pull it together, Steve Zahn. You're not done yet. Can you look up who Steve Zahn is? Sure. So that... Oh, weakling, other than a wuss. So that it's not just a special joke for Andrew Shankman and no one else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although, it's not so bad. No, it's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, you better watch these Let's Plays. <laughs> You're pulling this prank on yeah. us. Steve Zahn is an actor. There you go. American actor and comedian. Best known for roles in films including Reality Bites, Forces of Nature, Joyride, Riding in Cars with Boys, Saving Silverman, Daddy Daycare, National Security, Sahara and Perfect Getaway. I've not seen any of those. He's also known for lending his voice to Stuart Little, Stuart Little 2. <laughs> Stuart Little and Stuart Little 2? Ah. <laughs> Dr. Doolittle 2, Escape from Planet Earth, Chicken Little. It's in the little themed movies. Yeah, We, we Chicken. Yeah, Good We Stuart. The Good Dinosaur. And he voiced Swampy and Sherman on the family television series Phineas Swampy and, and Sherman. Yeah? And played Kobe on Mad Dogs. There you go. Yeah, I don't know any of those things. I think you would recognize him. Yeah. Um, 
if you saw him. I feel like I recognize him. Though I, I can't be sure. Yeah. He has an actor face. He does a bit. Yeah, he just looks like a guy. Yeah. He looks like a human male. Yeah. A person with hair and like eyes and a nose. Teeth. And faceness. Steve's on, everybody. Yep. If you're watching this, Steve's on, I'm sorry. I'm sure you're a talented actor. We know actor. who you are now. And I and I can't belittle your work because I'm <laughs> I've not seen it. <laughs> entirely unaware. Those all sound like big budget things that they don't let unimportant people do, though. Yeah. I like that he's been involved with um, Stuart Little, Stuart Little 2, Chicken Little, and Dr. Doolittle. Yeah. I appreciate that about his... Uh, little Do Doctor. Yeah. Little Do Doctor, exactly. The breadth of his work. Yeah. Molly's accidentally calling that dog. Yeah, I noticed that. Because it's like, if you hold mm -hmm. and on release, right, is when you uh, call the dog. So it's like the guy who does those uh, half A presses, uh, Mario sixty four <laughs> speed runs. Yeah, is probably all down for this game because right. there's it's one of the things that is um, in that game the release of the A does very little in very few circumstances. Right. So it's usually like just the down press that people actually care about. Yeah. But here the the release of the of the button actually has an in game effect. Oh oh there we go. So we're gonna get sleep so we don't get sick. Good call. So we don't want that. No. If you just hold down the R button you run, you don't need to keep on inputting the direction. Oh that's, that's good. Good a good night's sleep. Good Night. He just jumps in. He's ready. Wow. All right. So we're gonna call it there. So this has been the second episode of the Two Bit Game Club's Let's Play of Harvest Moon: Friends of Mineral Town for the Game Boy Advance from the year 2003, published by Nintendo. Yay! All right. 